Hello, I'd like to welcome everybody to Cyber Valley Days with a special welcome to Dr. Stegman, Minister of State and Head of State Chancellery. I'm Michael Black. I'm the Managing Director of the MPI for Intelligent Systems and I'm Speaker of Cyber Valley. And I wanna take this opportunity to look back and talk a little bit about how we got here, what we've achieved, look forward as to what's gonna happen next. And I'd like to end with a call to action, which I think is timely and critical. I'm sorry I can't be there with you. Unfortunately, uh, the Cyber Valley Days uh, occurs during CVPR. What is CVPR? Well, it's a conference in Seattle this year. It's the uh, IEEE Computer Vision and Pattern Recognition Conference. It's the fourth, mo fourth most influential conference in all of science, according to Google. Only behind Nature, the New England Journal of Medicine and Science. Cyber Valley uh, is a powerhouse in uh, computer vision, and we're in the top 20 institutions worldwide in terms of publications at CVPR. I want to take you back in time uh, to 2009. And in 2009, there were a couple of things happening. First of all, GPUs were being used for gaming. And for the very first time, people were beginning to program these to program uh, uh, for, for AI research. Okay. At the same time, there were several of us, Bernhard Schulkopf, myself, and several others that were formulating the idea for a new institute. We proposed an institute that will focus on establishing the scientific principles of perception, action, and learning. To perceive the world, methods of learning and inference will be crucial, we wrote. The potential of this approach for basic science rests in the hope that the organizing principles will turn out to be less complex than the systems they produce. Now, that's important. We, 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 we figured this in 2009, and we'll see evidence of that today in uh, modern AI systems. It took a couple of years to found the Institute in 2011. It kicked off, uh, and uh, at the time, there was um, the universities of Tübingen and Stuttgart had AI efforts going on, but they were still relatively small. So we started building, um, and in the, the context was immediately changing. And what happened in 2012, a couple of important things. First, AlexNet won the ImageNet challenge. So this was the first time that a deep neural network uh, achieved state-of-the-art performance, besting all of the sort of the best engineered systems. This, this was a found, you know, this was a sort of a, a massive shift in the field. And also that year, the Kitty dataset came out. It's a collaboration between Max Planck and the NKIT. And it was the first time a data set for autonomous driving was sufficient for applying machine learning techniques. And I really think this catalyzed the entire field of autonomous driving, 2012. But in 2013, things were starting to look a little shaky for Germany and our dependence on the auto industry. Headwinds were coming. Tesla sold its first car in Germany in 2013. Autonomous driving was coming. Uh, electric cars were coming. And, and there was great uncertainty. So we started thinking about that. And uh, in 2015, we formulated the idea for Cyber Valley. And the idea was to give Germany a new economic foundation. And we set out certain goals, okay? These goals were to attract and host excellent young scientists from all over the world. We, the goal was to not solve today's industry's problems, but rather to create the industries of tomorrow. That was critical in, in our thinking. We had the goal of supporting technology transfer through incubators and accelerator programs, create startup space at Max Planck, create an international faculty of outstanding young researchers in the region, in baden württemberg And that was, the goal was to create 20 new, more than 20, new chairs and research groups at MPI and the universities. We wanted to create a new doctoral school with 100 students in the next six years. It was a big ambition. New research facilities, access to top international candidates, PhD candidates in particular, and, uh, and create a highly visible new effort within Europe, um, and it, particularly here in baden württemberg in Europe's biggest market. So, and in this case, the Max Planck Society joined forces with industry and the universities to create something completely new. Formally, Cyber Valley kicked off in 2016 with these partner universities, uh, University of Stuttgart, University of Tübingen, the Land, uh, Max Planck, and uh, several uh, companies. Fraunhofer became part of it, Amazon, BMW, Bosch, um, Mercedes, IAV, Porsche, and ZF. 
So these people, these organizations took a risk. They said, the future is uncertain and we've got to invest. And we've got to invest in excellence. We've got to invest in basic research. And uh, they put their money where their mouth is and it changed things. So I hats off to them. So in 2017, we founded the International Max Planck Research School, joint effort between MPI and uh, the two neighboring universities. And remember, our goal was 100 students in six years. Well, it's less than six years, and we have more like three, close to 300 students. Uh, incredibly diverse from all over the world, uh, 45 different nationalities. We have 67 faculty and 14 associated faculty. This is a massive PhD program. It's one of the largest in the field in, of artificial intelligence. It's incredibly attractive and it draws the, the top candidates from all over. In 2017, the new MPI building came online. We occupied it. This was made possible by a 40 million euro um, funding from the land. Now, another major shift happened in 2022. Two things happened. Stable Diffusion was published at CVPR, the meeting I'm at now, um, from Germany, by the way. And ChatGPT was launched in November of that year. And nothing has looked the same since these two things happened. These are called generative models, large models. Uh, something else happened in 2022. Uh, China uh, began selling electric vehicles in, um, in Germany and uh, or selling vehicles in Germany. And now they account for 5.8% of electric vehicle sales in 2023. That same year, we launched the Tubian AI Center close ties to the Ellis Institute and, and MPI, uh, focusing on recruiting top talent, uh, new W3 professorships and research groups, um, continuing our effort to grow and establish ourselves in the region as the place um, for excellence in AI research. The uh, Cyber Valley AI Incubator kicked off in 2022, completing this mission uh, to create incubators and we first had to create the foundation of the students and the faculty and the excellence and the research. And then at that point, you can begin to push for commercialization. And we do doing that through the incubator program to create new startups. We now have over 60 startups in the uh, Cyber Valley Startup Network. Maybe it's close to 70 now. Um, and this excellence has put us at the top of uh, the top group in the world. We're ranked 13 or 14 in the world uh, in terms of publications in the, the top machine learning computer vision conferences. And um, I think this is quite an achievement. This is an undercounting of the impact of Cyber Valley. This is only counting MPI and the, and the University of Tübingen, University of Stuttgart, and not all of our partner companies. So we, you know, but this gives you an idea that by pooling together and really investing, we, we've achieved something worldwide of worldwide significance. Just to give you an idea of the rate of publications per year in these top conferences, uh, the rate before the founding of Cyber Valley is the orange line. And since the sub Cyber Valley, it's greatly accelerated. So this is just giving you an idea of the impact of this investment that's had on basic science. Continuing building the Ellis Institute uh, took up operations in 2023. I'll hear a lot more about that today with over 100 million, with 100 million euros in funding from the Hector Foundation and support from the, from the land. Again, focusing on attracting top young talent, providing outstanding conditions, and attracting the best people from all over the world. We can only really succeed if we attract the best. Now let's look forward to 2024 and beyond. We have two new Cyber Valley buildings coming in online. Remember I said we the goal was to invest in new uh, facilities. These are concrete proof of those um, coming forward. Now let's look at the state of the field. There are generative models now for text, images, video, 3D and 4D are coming. In 2024, we'll see lots of investment in AI related to 3D, 4D and, and robotics. On the minds of everyone are things like safety, ethics, the impact on society, impact on individuals, the kind of, what kind of regulation is needed. This is always something that we're paying a lot of attention to. Issues, of course, of copyright, privacy, and AI training data, this is, this is something we pay a lot of attention to. But innovations are coming 
in interactive real-time systems, AI at the edge in all kinds of computing devices, uh, it, not just uh, giant um, GPUs, uh, but really all over the place, smaller, faster systems that are easier to train, uh, more, more energy efficient, and open source models, I think, in this year and next year are going to become quite competitive. And we're seeing a, a huge interest in robotics these days in the training these large AI systems um, for robotic control or embodied AI. And Cyber Valley 2.0 is uh, an effort to double down on the things that we know and have learned are important, investment in basic research, and here we're going to push in new directions. Uh, robotics is a key one. It's still missing tactile sensing. We have excellence in, in our institute with Catherine Kuchenbecker. It's, it's, it's based on sort of old-fashioned materials, unlike biological systems. We need soft materials, and we need the really robust control algorithms um, to understand uh, the world and interact with it. Also, health uh, AI and health is going to play a huge role in the future, um, creating basically AI medicine for all at low cost. And Cyber Valley 2.0 is an effort to capitalize on both of those in the foundational research level. Um, but Cyber Valley 2.0 is really about also building on the things that we've developed over the last few years. And we see Germany's economy shrinking. This is um, in, in 2023. And over the last 15 years, we've built the foundations uh, for innovation in AI. And now it's really time to capitalize on this. Um, government is, the strong support of government has been a secret weapon and I think will continue to be. And Cyber Valley 2.0 is focused on transforming our investment in research to have an impact on the economy while investing in these next waves of health and robotics. But there are headwinds and, and I want to, to be brutally honest about these. This is not going to be easy sailing. Uh, the German investment climate is not good. Um, in venture investment here is risk averse compared to the United States. This is a significant problem. Starting companies in Baden-Württemberg is a problem. It's difficult. Um, the language issues, notary thing, don't get me started on notaries, amount of paperwork, tax regulations, and so on. It's cumbersome. It's, it's too cumbersome to start companies here. Space is limited for startups. We need a bold approach here that creates space, something like the Vector Institute um, in Toronto. It creates space and keeps it open um, so that somebody backs so that we have space for startups as they grow. The cost of computing resources is a huge issue for startups that stifles them before they even start. And we need bold and innovative approaches to providing support for startups to get going in this area. And this is just crazy, but we have limited flexibility for academic founders to be, actually participate in startups. And I, frankly, we're just shooting ourselves in the foot with this. This has to change. So I want to close in, in with some thoughts about how nations become and stay wealthy. Historically, it's about plentiful cheap labor. And historically that has involved things like slavery and colonialism, right? Today, we get that through immigration. Natural resources, second key thing. Historically, again, that's through expansion, war and colonialization, uh, or just luck that you were in the right place. Uh, today, technological changes, um, the technology changes the value of existing resources like wind and sun. And the third is stable government. The rule of law, fair courts, predictable regulation. Uh, today is it through democracy, co global cooperation, trade agreements. Um, this last one, uh, if it doesn't fall apart for us, we're good on that here in Germany. Um, we, the, we could still improve some things. We could try streamlining our bureau cumbersome bureaucracy, but, but we're pretty good on this one. In terms of natural resources, there's not a lot we can do here um, other than exploit what we have, for example, in terms of wind and solar. So the place where real change could happen uh, is in labor. We know we need immigration, but it also causes social disruption as we've seen. And, uh, 
And so the real, the only real solution to this is cheap labor. So the one thing we can change, and that's using AI. And I think we need a national, effectively like a Manhattan project to become the most advanced AI country. We need to become the place where people want to start AI businesses. We have to make it easy to come here or be here and start an AI business. We need to have a vigorous venture community. We need to encourage this with streamlined regulation and tax incentives. I don't see any other way to, to jumpstart our venture community and to take it to being bolder and investing more risk, with more risk. We have to leapfrog beyond digital zero to an economy with an AI foundation. In May of 2023, there was a survey and 82% of German companies surveyed still use fax machines. I'm just dumbfounded. This is not going to be easy for Germany. The fact that we can't get rid of fax machines does not bode well. We have to think much more radically. And the only way to do that is through startups. I have to say that big companies are not good at disruption. And this is why Cyber Valley from the very beginning has been focused on basic research and then translations through uh, incubation of startups and creating a startup culture that's vibrant, vigorous, and supported through uh, venture. AI is the labor force of the future. If we fumble this, we will not be globally competitive. Okay? I just want that to sink in. AI is the labor for force of the future. If we fumble this, we will not be globally competitive. Uh, AI will also cause social disruption, but our strong social system is better prepared to adapt to this than many other systems. So we should not be afraid. We should be aware, we should be adaptive, but we should not be afraid. And Cyber Valley is only one model. I'm not saying this is the right model for all of, all of Germany. We need investments of, and innovation of all kinds across the country, and we need to act now. So enjoy the rest of uh, Cyber Valley days and, um, and think boldly. Take care. Bye.